Um, a big aspect, I suppose, of all infographics is the fact that they use <coughs> imagery or images to convey the message. And it might be in the form of using graphs <coughs> or it might be in the form of using actual photo images or, or using iconography. You have to choose your image carefully or images carefully because very much as we've, we've reported in previous videos where there's the notion of colour science and colour theory and the way in which colours convey different um, outcomes in terms of uh, the way they affect our, our senses, so is true for, for images. So we have to think carefully about the kind of images that we're going to, to pick. And one of the things to recognise is actually there's an enormous array of images that are available and, and options that are available. Um, in terms of using images, you can either get those from kind of infographic sites or you can just make your own images. But the whole point of them is they're there to reinforce the message. They're there to alert the reader to the subject. And they're there really to make the, the, the infographic visually interesting, visually arresting. Um, but you have to ask yourself a question. Are you just putting them on there for the sake of putting them on there? Or are they actually serving the purpose that you want them to serve. So if in essence you've got them on there and they don't really seem to do anything that you, you want them to do, take them out. Maybe use text instead. Remember that one of the things we've reported in previous videos is that small blocks of text, as long as that, you know, it's not it's not small and unreadable and it's not like writing the Magna Carta, actually is is interpreted very well, almost better sometimes than images, particularly graphs on, on infographics. Now, you've got a number of options here. Clearly, you've got kind of people-based images. So you have to think a little bit, and these are great for kind of the health-based and, and spine exercise science ones. So you might have static people, generally use the static person if we're dealing with things like um, health risks, if we're talking about inactivity. So be careful when you pick an image. If you're particularly doing an infographic which is about sport, it's unlikely that they're going to be static, so you may want to pick the active kind of icons because it relates to more health-based or performance-based um, outcomes. And it can also be used to kind of motivate, it can also dissuade, but it can also be used to motivate people, particularly if you're using a message-based uh, infographic. You've got those images which are subject-based. So for example, this one, it's a, it's a wheel, so we know that it's about bike riding. One of the best infographics I ever saw um, was in relation to the physiological demands of tennis. And the, it, was a, it, it, it used an image in the middle, so it was an inside out infographic. And the key metric, the key value was in the middle of a tennis ball. And then everything else was done with little tennis balls around the outside. It was a tremendous way of imparting the image and getting across this is all about tennis. You've then got those kind of images that are, are trigger images. So if you're if you're perhaps dealing with, you know, if it's a health based one, you know, a, 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 some French fries like you see here is a great idea of, you know, promoting something to do with negativity of fast food. But certain images are also certain. You can use also certain images within sport as trigger images, a bit like subjects in many ways. But, you know, for example, um, if you've got an, an image where you've got somebody that's on crutches, for example, it's a trigger because it, it, it triggers about the notion that this is probably to do with injury and, and, and so on. And then we've got kind of those images which are biological and those which are what's called the equivalence images. So the biological ones, it might be where we've labelled body parts. So it might be, you know, trying to emphasise something, particularly if you're trying to educate the reader. And a lot of what we are doing in, in, in infographics, particularly if they are um, subject-based infographics, is we're educating. If we're perhaps going for, um, I think, maybe more of a question one, there's perhaps less of a, an education going on there. Then you've got the kind of the equivalences. So if you're trying to, to explain to me, the great example here is calories. So... That's quite an abstract concept. But if you can compare variables, so for example, you know, um, I don't know, we've got here the ice cream 
is the equivalent to a glass of wine, people get that. People understand that. They, they can conceptualise that. So think a little bit about, about that when you're putting your, your infographics together. And then you've kind of got what we call recommended actions. So again, you might think about you know, a behavioural change one. Um, again, it's a, an educational one. Or you've got kind of outcome images. Um, so it might be health change behaviours. And again, we can use those to motivate and dissuade. And then really the final ones are the kind of the decorative ones, which I would actually say try and avoid um, because they overcomplicate the infographic and they really kind of take away from the messaging. But one that works very well is kind of context tone. There's no direct visual relationship, to, in this case, to health, but it does provide information in relation to the tone of the poster. So it might be that you're trying to use the example here, as you might be using this to try to demonstrate, you know, population, you know, number of people living in blocks of flats, for example, or you might be using it to try and show scale within your within your infographic. So I'm just going to show you some examples. Now, before I do, one of the things I would say is be very careful when using images about using things like graphs. Remember, we've said in previous videos that, that the general public much prefer actually either kind of these icon images or text. They do not conceptualize graphs. Remember that you're not generally communicating with a science audience. So there are limited ways in which you can use graphs and the obvious ways that work are things like pie charts, but again, not overly complicated, and also things like the donut based shapes. I'll show you these in some, some examples and also how to get it very, very badly wrong. So in this one here, we can see some icons being used to, to, to display activity. Remember, this is about physical activity for pregnant women. So notice that all of the icons are moving based icons. So they're designed to reinforce the message that we are um, trying to get across in this in this infographic. In this example here, it's quite an interesting one. It's how active are we? But notice it's a question, but it's actually referring to the amount of generally the amount of inactivity that is going on. And they've actually got around it to a certain degree on the on the right hand side where only 34 percent of men and 24 percent of women undertake muscle strengthening activities. They're showing you the activities in the, between the males and the females, but they're reinforcing the messages with the with the imagery on the infographic. In this example here. Now, this is a great example of using donuts. So the donuts are being used in this case to show high intensity exercise at low intensity. And they've got a key which is telling you, you know, high and, and, and low. So it's, it's kind of indicating for us how much of the work undertaken by the different positions in the game is high and how much is, is low intensity. Remember, it's not necessarily about having absolute accurate values. It's about just giving the reader a sense through the imagery of what's un being undertaken. And again, notice that the one icon that they use, which is about movement, which is in the bottom left, shows somebody who's actually moving. In this example here, which is using classic infographic iconography, they're using the body parts to reinforce those key physiological components. So aerobic energy contribution, they're actually showing the, the, the respiratory system. Now, one could argue that's, that's perhaps slightly a bit misrepresenting, but you know, it's an, it's an easy way to explain to the general public that it's kind of to do with using air. When they're referring to VO2 peak or VO2 max, they've again linked it to respiration. And again, I think people visualize the lungs quite, quite well, and they've used droplets to, to, to show blood lactate. So you can see the way in which they are using particular images here to reinforce the, the messages that are coming across. On this example here, and it's about kind of the tone. Then the image is of our character with a broken leg or on crutches. So again, it reinforces the message that's coming across. So it's about picking the right icons to refer what's going on here. Remember, this is about kind of injury. So a lot of the, the images are about people in bed or lying down or, 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 or so on. But here's a great example of getting it drastically wrong. So the images that are being used are pie charts, but we are unable to interpret anything from these pie charts. It's not possible to understand what these pie charts are showing us because as we referred to in previous videos, there's no direction of travel, but the pie charts are pretty much indistinguishable from each other. 
and very, very difficult to read. So the icon that they've used, which is the pie chart, may have been appropriate in terms of thinking about this mathematically, but is not appropriate in terms of trying to get the information across on an infographic. And here's a great example of getting an infographic wrong. So <clears throat> it says in, the inf in, in here, it says 76% of the extreme poor live in rural areas. Well, <clears throat> here's a great example of using imagery and getting it wrong. If you look at that infographic, that is not 76%. Doesn't matter which way you cut that pie, <laughs> that is not 76%. So if you're going to use imagery and you're going to use maybe pie charts or donuts, make sure that they are actually representative of the, of, of the kind of the of the values you're trying to put forward. They don't have to be precise, but they have to be pretty close. I mean, you know, if that had been closer to 75%, then one would have perhaps been able to accept it. So make sure that you pick the right icons to impart the message that you're trying to get across. So you're trying to reinforce the, 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 the activity. If you're going to use photos, make sure that they are photos that have got a very high, what's called a bitmark. That means they are high quality images. So when they're zoomed up or they go on to digital resolution, they show up to the wider audience.